All right. So anyway, the, my drummer came to me and said, sing this scripture. And then the scripture was Proverbs 3. And, it said, and it, I just looked at it, and then I started going. Said we will write them on the day. Ooh, I see y'all be on Instagram, huh? Y'all be Said we really ought to write. Okay, let us sing the song, all right? Come on, let's go for it. Y'all gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. Huh? Write them on it. He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. Yeah. So let not my this morning for worship and we're believing God that you're going to be blessed encouraged and inspired text somebody tag somebody and tell them to tune in right now the kingdom experience is on uh, listen we got a few rules here at kingdom builders and that is you cannot build alone no no we want you to take some tag and call the family in the room with you and let's prepare to get engaged in the worship and the word together uh, we're getting ready to move forward in worship and with the word. Uh, but if you want to get more information about the ministry, that information will be on the screen. You can text KBB to 54244. That's right. You can text KBB to 54244. Uh, but somebody will be standing by even now doing the worship in the chat room just to communicate with you. And uh, we want to connect with you on this journey. Uh, that we call the abundant life. Uh, today is part three. That's right. Today is part three of living my best life. And uh, it is my prayer. We've heard testimonies uh, from lesson one and then last week, but it is our prayer that you have been encouraged. If you've been blessed by the uh, the series, Living My Best Life, come on, type it there. Let us know what you have, uh, what has ministered to you. Come on, let us know what nugget, what principle has really made an impact in your life. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know it. Come on, you can just take a time, take a moment and text it, tag it right there. Come on, put it right there. 
uh, let us know what nugget have been a blessing to you. Uh, as we prepare to get into worship, we believe at KBB that everybody deserves at least eight hugs. You know how we do. Come on, we hadn't changed. Nothing has changed. COVID hadn't stopped us. We're still hugging. We're still loving on each other. We're doing it in a socially distant way in the cyber sanctuary. So come on, if you will. Just prop your phone up, prop your tablet up. If you got it on the TV screen, you're even better. Just go ahead and get around. Let's go ahead and get ready. The song is there for you. That's right. We are family. We're one. And uh, it's a family reunion. That's what it is. It is a family reunion. Come on, let's go ahead and hug. You ready? Number one. Mm. Come on, let's get number two out of the way. Yes, yes. Number three. Number four. Number five, I see somebody not hugging. Come on, I need to see you, I need to see you. Number six, yes, good to see you. Number seven, come on, I see you, I see you. Come on, number eight, let's hold this one, let's hold it. Come on, squeeze me, tight, tight, tight. Hold it, rock me, shake me. Yes, listen, I miss you all so much. And uh, my wife and I talk so often about you all and missing these hugs and uh, the opportunities, but uh, this is a way that we can connect and we're thanking God uh, for this opportunity to be able to come into your homes. Our worship team is coming to lead us uh, to the throne room of heaven and we'll be back to share the word just before they come. Let's go ahead and elevate our minds and prepare for worship and the word. Father, we thank you. Uh, before we ask you for anything, God, we just want to thank you for being God in this place. Thank you for being God in our family's life. God, thank you for being God in the lives of our brothers and sisters that are connected to kingdom builders. God, we thank you for everything you've done this week. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for shielding us. Thank you for covering us. And we thank you for rebuking death and accidents. Uh, God, we're thanking you for the dangers that we did not see that you prevented from taking control. God, thank you for stopping the enemy in his tracks. And we want to say thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Now, Father, let this worship be engaging. Help us to cherish this moment, God. Remove every distraction that will come to cause us not to be able to focus on worship and then on your word. God, we're believing that your word is going to change lives. Thank you for the souls that will be saved. Thank you for the bodies that will be healed because the word is going forth and going to make an impact in their life. Now, God, we want this word to charge us. Let your word challenge us. But more importantly, God, let this word change us. We give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. It's in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name we pray and let every glad heart said, amen. Listen, our praise team is coming to lead us and we'll be back to get right into the word. I love you and we're praying for you. Come on, praise team, lead us.
to this word listen it's part three part three of living my best life and i'm excited about this come on let's turn with us to philippians chapter 3 verse number 7 through 12 philippians 3 verse 7 through 12 i'm going to read it out of the new international version uh, because of the wording of the text listen at what it says but whatever were gained to me he says i now consider loss for the sake of christ 
What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Look at verse number nine and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through Christ, it's faith. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. Verse number 11. And so somehow obtaining to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained all of this. Look at what Paul says or have already arrived at my goal, but I pressed on taking hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind me and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I want to talk for a few moments with this thought in our mind. This is part three of living my best life, but I want to put a handle on this one, and that is walk away. Come on, come on. I need you to type it there. It's going to be on the screen. Walk away. We said this before, and I want to say it again. John 10, 10, the Bible tells us that the thief comes, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Uh, Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and to live it to the fullest. Jesus makes it very clear that he came so that we can live our best lives on earth, not just when we get to heaven, but so that we can live a purposeful and abundant life, not just in quantity, but the quality of life on earth. So think about this. Uh, Gary Kelly wrote a book. Gary Kelly wrote a book entitled The One Thing. It's going to make sense in a moment. The one thing he is the founder of Keller Williams. Uh, the reason he says, and I quote, the reason most people don't reach their potential or accomplish goals is because they allow the trivial things in life to overcrowd the vital few. He also says having five top priority really means nothing is a priority. If everything is equally important, then nothing is really important. Trying to do too many things at the same time and of equal importance doesn't lead to productivity, but mediocrity. Think about this, y'all. You must learn how to focus, which means you have mastered the art of shutting out all distractions so you can focus on what's really important. Distractions, he says, are tools of the enemy that uses that he uses to get us off of the one thing that is important. A a example. Let me give you an example how people don't like to take shots from the doctor. So what happens is the nurse will distract you by getting you talking about something else. I never forget as our kids were smaller, uh, one of our sons, I think all of them, but I know one of them didn't like shots. And anytime he can tell when the nurse was about to shoot him in the arm, give him a shot, he would always start crying. So she would distract him showing other things. And before you know it, bam, then already stuck him in the arm. What, what are you saying? This is what happens over and over and over again with the enemy. He tries to distract us from the main thing. He, he sends distractions like, here it is, Facebook. Now, 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 it's different when you know how to handle Facebook. You use it for what it's designed and what it was meant to you be used for and not just sit and spend your whole day on social media. Uh, he, he uses distractions like Twitter. Uh, uses distractions like Instagram, Snapchat, uh, cell phones. He can sometimes use distractions like a boo or a bay. Yeah, yeah. Anybody that takes my focus off of the main thing is nothing more than a distraction. See, see, the enemy will wake us up with distractions. And the reality is if we wake up with the distraction, it only intensifies as our day pro goes on and our mind gets off kilter and we begin to drift on. So by midday, you're going home full of distractions. 
hadn't accomplished anything that you set out to do because you allowed yourself to prioritize everything as important when we should have only kept the main thing. One of my classmates said her father taught this. Keep the main thing the main thing. Grandma said it this way. I know some of y'all probably had the same kind of grandmothers that I had, but both of my grandmothers were saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, but, but my grandmothers would say it this way. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Now think about this, because in order to wake up with your mind on Jesus, you have to lay down with your mind on Jesus. Uh, in other words, I don't have room to entertain any other thoughts outside of Jesus Christ. Can, can, can I say that again? I don't have room to entertain anything other than Jesus Christ. Jesus, God said it this way, and I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Now, let me give us a kingdom nugget, and this will be the premise for the message today, and it'll be on the screen for you. Write this down. People who can't focus don't pray, and people who don't pray can't worship, and people who don't worship won't win. God, I can close and go home right there. Let me say it again. I need you to get it. Leave it up on the screen for a while. People who can't focus don't pray. And people who don't pray don't worship. And people who don't worship won't win. See, see, we must learn how to worship God through distractions. We must learn how to pray through distractions. We must learn how to uh, focus on through distractions because the enemy's job is to send distractions to keep our focus off of the main thing. Come on, look at the text here. Paul here in this letter is talking about his former life and his current life not being able to be compared to his future life. Did y'all hear that? He's defending his right to be an apostle because there were some people in his day that really didn't want to validate his apostleship because of his Damascus Road experience. When you go back and look at that, you will discover that other people were with Paul. Other people were knocked off of the beast as well. But Paul was the only one that heard the voice. God, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a lesson for a whole nother day. Everybody else was around him, but only Paul heard the voice. And so it is, he speaks about his accomplishments and his achievements, but he concludes by saying how he was able to focus on the main thing, which was obtaining Christ and everything God has for him and put the distractions behind him. So, so can I give us principle number one? It's going to be on the screen for you. Make sure you write this down. Here it is. Your focus will influence your passion. Your focus will influence your passion. Th that I may know him. Know in the Greek means to imitate. Listen at this. It means intercourse, imitate intercourse or initiate Im intercourse and connection. <laughs> initiate, imitate intercourse and connections. Paul says, I want to be intimately interconnected with Jesus with a passion. Did y'all hear that? Paul says, I want to be intimately interconnected with Jesus with a passion. Paul was passionate about his assignment and that was knowing Christ Jesus. Come on, write this down. Principle number two, you can't operate in purpose without passion. Yeah, you can do what you do, but if you're going to be in purpose, you need passion. Your passion should fuel you and push you toward your purpose. You, you, you can be a passionate. You can be passionate about the wrong thing. You can be passionate about the wrong thing. But if you're going to operate in purpose, you need passion. Now, listen at this. Passion doesn't lead purpose. Purpose leads passion. Passion doesn't lead purpose. Purpose leads passion. Ah, if passion leads, it can take me down the wrong path. Did y'all hear that? Have you ever been passionate about somebody that was not a part of your purpose and it led you down the wrong path? Have you ever been, been passionate about a job? And you got it and it led you down the wrong path. See, 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 here's what I've discovered. Passion shouldn't lead. Purpose should lead 
and drive the vehicle while passion is a part of it. See, see, passion, think about this, is the level of emotional intensity generated towards something that ultimately impacts your resolve and determination. Yeah, I need passion, but passion should not override my purpose. My purpose is greater than my passion and my purpose drives passion. See, see, people can't figure out why you keep trying to open the business. It's purpose. But passion is under there. P people can't figure out with everything he did to you, with how, how he talked to you like a dog, he don't treat you like the queen you are. She talked to you like you're nobody, disrespectful to you. Don't ever say she's praying for you. Don't ever say thank you for how you're making provisions for the house. D I mean, don't, don't, don't ever uh, speak highly of you. And people can't figure out why in the world are you giving your marriage another child? What they don't understand is you're in purpose and the passion is fueling that, but you're not operating on feelings alone. You want to stay in purpose. Did y'all hear that? Purpose, purpose, purpose. Come on, principle number three, write it down. Uh, it can only be filled to the level of my hunger and thirst. Passion, my purpose. Passion, it can only be filled to the level of my hunger and and thirst. Uh, the Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The more hungry I am, the more he fills me. The more thirsty I am, the more he gives me to drink. So if I stop being hungry, I stop receiving from God. If I stop being thirsty, I stop receiving from God. But every time you wake up hungry, God says, I'll feel that hunger and then you come back hungry again I feel it again you come back thirsty I feel it again because the more you hunger I'm going to feel you and I'm going to quench that thirst Paul was one of the smartest apostles to ever live how do you say that pastor he had a dual citizenship he was a citizen of Rome and a Jew <laughs> think about that he was a citizen of Rome and a Jew but he said, when Jesus changed my purpose, he shifted my perspective. See, see, when he changed my purpose, it shifted my perspective. Can I say this in a practical way? If I'm single today, when I get married, my purpose and perspective should change. I can't live like I'm single. I can't act like I'm single. I've got to shift my perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you can't act with one child like you would or like you should when you've got two. Your purpose and perspective have to change because the, 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 the obvious has already changed. Paul says it this way. I have not arrived yet. Think about this, y'all. It's a kingdom thought. It's going to be on the screen. I need you to get this. Don't treat the benchmark like the goal. Did you hear that? Do not treat the benchmark like the goal. Your goal is to lose 25 pounds. But just because you reach the benchmark of five pounds, don't celebrate it like it's the goal. Thank God. But don't you go out there and eat a tub of ice cream, a number three tub of ice cream, talking about I've already arrived. No, no, no. That's the benchmark. That's not the goal. Are y'all listening to me today? See, see, you, you, you want the degree. But after you take two classes and you make A's and then you got a 4.0, don't you quit now. You just reached a benchmark. That is not the goal. Don't act like you graduated. Did y'all hear that? Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, yeah, you, you wanted her. You've been talking about how fine she is. You've been talking about how much education she has. You've been talking about uh, all the characteristics and qualities, uh, wifely qualities that she possessed. Now that you've gotten her, don't you let yourself loose. Don't you stop doing what you were doing to get her. Don't treat the benchmark like it's the goal. The goal is to make her my wife. The goal is to be the best husband I can be. Don't treat benchmarks like it's the goal. Are y'all listening to me? I hope this is good. Come on, type it there if you're getting something. I received that, Pastor. I received that. See, see, the devil wants us to become satisfied so that we don't keep reaching for something greater. 
Ah, the devil wants us to become satisfied so that I'll keep being the shack up girl when my purpose and goal is to be the wife. Oh, I'm teaching good today. See, see, the devil wants me to be satisfied at being the sugar daddy so that I can keep paying bills, getting a few privileges when the goal should be to be the husband. See, see, the devil wants me to be satisfied at being an apartment owner or renter when the goal is home ownership. Are y'all listening to me today? See, he wants me to be satisfied, but you can't be satisfied because if you become satisfied, you'll stop reaching. Oh, God, I need you to touch somebody in the cyber sanctuary, somebody in your house. If you're watching, just touch them and tell them I'm not all of that. Uh, but, but, but here's the balance. Here's the balance. Here's the balance. Don't downplay your progress and act like you haven't made progress. Be thankful for the progress, but keep reaching. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I paid off one credit card, but I got three more to go. I'm glad I bought that 2005 Toyota Camry, but there's a 2020 Range Rover out there. Don't, 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 don't be satisfied where you are. Thank God for the progress. Celebrate your progress, but keep reaching for the goal. Oh, God, can I, can, can, can I talk for so, some of those in the cyber sanctuary? I, I hope you, I'm, I'm just going to park the car. I'm not even going to put it in. I'm going to park it. Let me just park it for a moment. Big Luther. Not, not, not little Luther. Big Luther said, and I quote, a chair is still a chair. Even, come on, I, I feel some of you, don't, don't you turn me off and turn on Luther right now. Wait till after this broadcast. He says, even if no one is still is sitting there, a house is still a house. Listen at this. It's still a home when no one's there to hold you tight and no one. Ah, I feel somebody saying, Pastor, I got to go turn Luther on. Don't you turn us off to turn Luther on. Well, what are you saying? A chair is nice and a house is nice. But what's more important is to have somebody in the home making the house feel like a home. Don't be satisfied at the benchmark when the goal is much bigger and it's attainable. Can, can, can I give you your kingdom shout? You're saying, Pastor, we're moving fast today. Yeah, but we got a long way to go. Come on, write it down. Your kingdom shout. Write this down. Focus will determine my priority. Focus will determine my priority. Look at verse number seven. But whatever things were gained to me, I now consider a loss for Christ's sake. Pa Paul says, when I look at what I've gained and I measure it up against what my new purpose is, I've determined that what I've gained is now a loss. Did y'all hear me, cyber sanctuary? He says, when I look at what all I've gained, and I place it up against my new purpose and my new perspective. Everything I've gained is a loss. Oh, what are you saying? If I don't shift my focus, I'll walk in my new assignment with the old mindset. Paul says, don't walk in a new assignment with the old mindset. Don't go to the new job acting like you did on the old job. Don't go to the new marriage. Listen at this acting like you acted in the last marriage or you'll end up in the same position. You've got to treat the new man like the new man. You have to treat the new woman like a new woman. You have to treat the new job like a new job. Don't you treat the newness like something old or you end up reverting back to something old and you'll stop reaching for what's in front of you. I hope I'm talking to somebody in here. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Look at what Paul says in verse number 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but this one thing I do. Come on, somebody type it there. I can't do a whole lot of stuff, Pastor, but I can do one thing. <laughs> Come on, type it there. I, I don't do a lot of things well, but I do one thing well. Well, what do you do, Paul? Paul says, forgetting what's behind me. But you got a master's degree. But I'm forgetting what's behind me. That's a doctoral degree in front of me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but you, got a, you, you got a girlfriend. I'm forgetting what's behind me. There's a wife in front of me. Woo, I'm talking good. Forgetting what's behind me and I'm reaching, I'm straining, one version says, toward what's in front of me. Listen at this. If it's behind me, the only way for me to remember it, I must turn around and look at it. 
Did you hear that? If it's behind me, the only way for me to remember it, I must turn around and look at it. But Paul says, if I deliver my mind, my body will soon catch up. See, see, my body may be turning around. But if my mind is ahead, eventually my body has to catch up. See, can I tell us something? Sometimes we try to make the body do what the mind has not already resolved yet to do. See, see, my, I'm trying to make my body keep money and don't spend it frivolously. But my mind is already spending it. <laughs> see, see, uh, my, 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 my mind is saying when my stimulus hit, when my income tax hit, I'm going to buy me two 85-inch TVs. My body is trying to hold on. See, whatever, listen to this, whatever your mind has resolved to do, your body will soon follow. So if your mind says you're not going to spend, you're not going to buy another TV this year, and your body keeps reaching trying to grab the money, if your mind is saying, no, I don't care how much you reach in trying to grab the money, you won't pull nothing out because your mind is on a different level. Are y'all weary? Are y'all with me today? See, 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 if you train the mind, there's a commercial that says train the mind and the body will follow. Cyber sanctuary, get this. If you get your mind out of debt, your body will eventually get it. If you get your mind focused on being uh -huh, a one woman man, your body will get it. If you get your mind right, somebody type it there. I'm working on my mind. Paul says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm pressing for the things that are in front of me. Here it is, and I'm done. There's an example of this. When I was uh, in JFK Airport in, in New York years ago, uh, the JFK uh, Airport, the International Airport in New York, uh, the bathrooms were so modern. Listen at this. They were so modern that once you finish handling your business, <laughs> in order to flush the toilet, toilet you had to walk away. Y'all missed it. In order for you to flush the toilet, there was no button there for you to flush. There, there was no lever there for you to push the handle on. But they were so modern years ago, if you wanted to flush away the waste or anything that you released out of your body that you did not want or need, in order for it to flush, it, you had to literally walk away. Because there was a sensor there that told the, the, the toilet uh, or the commode when Somebody had left and that's when it flushed. God, I hope you get this. Somebody saying, Pastor, what are you saying? In other words, once you finish handling your business in the stall or at the urinal, in order for whatever you release uh -huh, to go down the drain, you had to finish and walk away. Can I talk to somebody in the cyber sanctuary? This is why I'm saying this year you have to walk away because there's some stuff you release that it won't go down until you walk away. Pastor, I released that bad relationship, but when you walk away, it'll be flushed away. I released that negative attitude, but when you walk away, it'll be flushed away. Pastor, I released spending more than I make, but when you walk away, it'll be flushed away. I need somebody right now with your cell phone in your hand to just start walking around your apartment. Start walking around your house. Start walking around your job. Start walking around your car. What are you saying? I'm walking away so God can flush everything I don't need. <coughs> Come on, somebody type it there. Flush it away. Flush it away. Flush it away. He can't flush it away if I don't walk away. God, I feel like talking in here. He can't flush it away if I don't walk away. He can't flush it away if I don't walk away. I'm going to leave it on the altar. I'm going to turn and walk away and walk toward purpose. And I want to talk to somebody in the cyber sanctuary. If you want it to be flushed away, walk away. But pastor, I love him. No, 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 no. Walk away. So he can flush away that feeling. But I need just two more 85 inch TVs. No, 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 no. Walk away so he can flush away that desire to have more than you need. <coughs> Excuse me. Walk away. Somebody type it there. I'm walking away. Why, why, why do you say that, Pastor? Because if I walk away, God can flush it away. And I want to pray for somebody in the cyber sanctuary right now. That's saying, Pastor, <clears throat> I've been having an issue with everything I release to God 
still being there when I come back. It's because you have not officially walked away. You put it down on Sunday, but you pick it back up on Monday. You're putting it down on Monday, but you're picking it back up on Tuesday. And until you walk away, it can't be flushed away. Leave what he did to you in the past. Leave what she said about you in the past. Walk away. And when you walk away, God says, I'll flush it away. There is something in front of you that you've got to reach for. And you can't reach for it always looking back. Train your mind. And your body will follow. Father, I thank you for this word. We're saying now, God, that we're walking away from bad relationships. We're walking away from negative mindsets. We're walking away from pessimistic attitudes. We're walking away from anything and anybody that's beneath who you've called us to be. And we're reaching for what's in front of us. God, as we're walking away, we want you to flush it away. As we're walking away, we want you to wipe away everything. That's not like you. Give my brother the strength to walk away. Give my sister the strength to walk away. God, as we walk away, if we were to return back to that same place, we will discover that it's already been flushed away because our mind is already reaching and our bodies are following. God, we're pressing toward the mark, the prize of the high calling that's in your son, Christ Jesus. Thank you for the ability to walk away. Thank you for the mindset to walk away. Father, we thank you for what we're going to see as a result of us trusting you and walking away. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. It's in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, listen, we're, we're walking away. And as we're walking away, God is flushing it away. I, I pray you've been blessed. We're preparing now to sow <clears throat> and go together. I pray you've been blessed. I'm walking away from defeat. I'm walking away from doubt. I'm walking away, listen at this, from negativity and negative bank accounts. I'm walking away from low self-esteem and poverty. I'm walking away from bad attitudes, listen at this, and bad checks. What do you mean, Pastor Ren? You've got to set your mind on something greater. God has something bigger and greater in store for you. And we're walking into it. And as we walk towards it, we're walking away from something else. We're preparing our hearts to honor God. Why do we honor God, Pastor? Because he gave me the strength to walk away from something that was draining. He gave us the strength to walk away something that was sucking the life out of us. And for that, we want to honor God with our first fruit. Get your tithe in your hand. Get you your seed in your hand. I pray you're giving God a good gift. Don't forget, we're in this season of our first fruits. I love my church. That's right. You know the seeds that we have uh, have them. We're sowing together corporately. It remember, it's asked to give $250. You know what we're doing corporately. That's some things that we're planning now that we're already in the process of. So you can do that now. Those of you that are giving it now, go ahead and do that. Put your, get your seed together. Your first fruit. And I'm asking everybody that's giving your tithe, your offer. Come on, the ways to give on the screen. The ways to give on the screen. How do I walk, walk away from poverty? By turning and walking towards, listen at this, everything that's in front of me. And I'm walking towards riches. I'm walking towards wealth. Come on, get that seed in your hand and let's prepare to sow today. We don't just give money, but we give our seed an assignment. Come on, repeat after me, I'm a tither. I gladly take the tithe out of my house and bring them into the storehouse. Come on, say this with me today. I confess the windows of heaven blessings over my life. I'm a cheerful giver. I give to the work of God and the man of God. And because I do so, my God shall supply all of my needs. Come on, somebody say it with me. Say this week. No, 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 say it again. This week, I expect unexplainable blessings favor is on my life. Where is it coming from? Say favor from the north, favor from the south, favor from the east, and favor from the west. Say, God, give me favor with somebody that can bless me. It is so in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Listen, go ahead and give your seeds now. Give your seeds. I'm living my best life, and I'm walking away from doubt and defeat, and I'm walking toward encouragement and victory. Come on, get your seeds together. Come on, go ahead and give now, those that are giving, and I'll be back in just a moment for our final remarks and benediction. While the information is on the screen, go ahead and sow. Go ahead and sow. You can text that seed. Text two, text KBMG to 54244, or you can do Givelify, Cash App, or you can mail in your contributions. But the information is on the screen for you. Go ahead and give now, and I'll be back in just a moment. Listen, I, I thank God for this opportunity. I, I'm telling you, yeah, we don't take this lightly, but uh, it's always an honor when we can come into your homes and just uh, be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a blessing. What a joy. And I want to thank you. Listen, if you were blessed by this less, this message today, uh, would you help us get the word out? It's on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go there. It's Kingdom Builders Birmingham. Subscribe there. You can get all the ministry updates. Uh, but won't you help us by sharing this? Uh, and if you logged on late, you said, Pastor, I, I caught the tail end. I missed it. I know there was so much more that I missed. It's okay. We got you. I'm telling you, this is the year of balance for us. And I know there are a lot of things that's pulling at us. And, you know, sometimes you don't get a chance to log on on time because of what's going on. It's okay. Monday night, we have what we call the rebuild. That's right. It's going to be on the screen, the rebuild. We're going to air the message again at 8 o'clock p.m. And I really believe you're going to be blessed as a result of the word that's going to be deposited in your life. Tune in uh, in the morning for morning manna. I'm telling you, morning manna, 6 a.m., our 10-minute prayer target and devotion. You're going to be blessed as we get your day and your week started. I'm telling you, on behalf of my wife, uh, Lady Angela Wren, who's no affectionately known as the fragrance of the house, uh, we want to thank you for your time. We are out of time. Uh, but we have to keep building the kingdom. Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, as always, hide us behind your cross and cover us in your blood. Give us traveling grace. Let us make it to our destination safe and sound. We rebuke death, accidents, and incidents. It's in your son Jesus, the Christ's name we pray. Let every glad heart say amen. Listen, I love you and we're praying for you. And until next time, let's keep building the kingdom one person at a time. Let's be it. Lift your hands right here. We always win. No yeah. matter what comes our way. No matter what we face. Come on, Kenny. Yeah, 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 yeah